Welcome to Cabinet TV Media News. I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. The headlines. SEC NAB's former Ministry of Health, P.S. Kennedy Malama, as Zambians reflect on the HIV burden. Former Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo reported to the police for unprofessional conduct. Join me with the details after this commercial. Team, the trajectory of the business looks very positive and it looks like we'll be able to launch the ministry. She has so much data. Mom. Yes, baby. It says here, mm -hmm. global warming and climate change mm -hmm. is caused by the pollution from careless activities of human beings. Wow. Son, do you know I can turn my phone into a TV remote? How is that possible? It's so easy. Check this out. Be smart. Be fast with mega data from Zamto. Get your 15 GB mobile data for only 100 kwacha, 30 GB mobile data for only 200 kwacha, and your 70 GB LTE data bundle with free Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, and WhatsApp. Visit our Facebook page, website, or service centers countrywide for more information. Zamtel, your digital lifestyle partner. And other media news in detail. Lusaka province has recorded the highest human immunodeficiency virus infectious currently at 15.1% against 11% countrywide with the majority being the youth. Officiating at the World's A Day commemoration, Minister of Health Silvia Masewo says this could be as a result of school closure during the peak of the COVID-19 resulting in a lot of illicit activities. Meanwhile, UNH Country Director Dr. Teresi Baruhuta says Zambia has continued to face numerous challenges in an effort to end AIDS. <laughs> On Wednesday, 16th June 2021, former President Edgar Chagualungu, through the Secretary to the Cabinet, directed a number of heightened interventions to further prevent the spread against COVID-19 in the country. Amongst them, pre, primary and secondary schools were closed for 21 days. Inasmuch as this measure was so that the learners are safe from COVID-19 third wave, a lot of young people saw this as an opportunity to engage in two immoral activities which could have resulted in two unwanted pregnancies and a rise in HIV and AIDS infections. At the commemoration of World AIDS Day, Minister of Health says Lusaka has recorded the highest HIV and AIDS infections currently at 15.1% against 11% countrywide, with the majority being the youth. We need to address stigma and discrimination, other inequalities which drive the HIV pandemic. We need to address unequal access to information, human rights violations, gender-based violence, social economic and social behavioral barriers, as well as punitive laws and policies as they perpetuate the HIV pandemic. Our achievements are commendable. Less people are dying. Less babies are being born with HIV. But we cannot afford to have an increasing number of new infections. And UN Aid Country Director says Zambia has continued to face several challenges in the effort to end AIDS. There numerous challenges in the effort to end HIV as a public health treat by 2030. With, with 1.5 million Zambia living with HIV, Zambia is one of the hardest hit countries in the region. And despite reaching those important milestones in national HIV response, we shall see that 40% of new infections are unfortunately coming from the young people and adolescents. This is again the backdrop of the rise of teenage pregnancies due to the school closure experience during the COVID-19 epidemic. Meanwhile, United States Embassy Church de Affairs says the U.S. government will continue working with government in combating AIDS in Zambia. The United States government, through the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Release, or PEPFAR, has long invested in reaching the most vulnerable to HIV. We believe that addressing stigma
stigma and discrimination is essential to attaining and maintaining HIV epidemic control. We will achieve this goal together by preventing new infections and initiating and keeping those who are living with HIV on life-saving treatment. Blessings to Aquila, Camnet News, Lusaka. A concerned citizen has reported former Home Affairs Minister Stephen Kampiongo to the police for allegedly failing to curtail unprofessional conduct by some police officers during the time he was in office. Speaking to Kamna TV after reporting the matter to the Lusaka Central Police on Wednesday, Mr. Sheldon Mwemba states that it was under the watch of Mr. Kampiongo that the house of Mr. Haka in the Hichilema was broken into and ransacked by police when he was arrested on treason allegations in 2017. Mr. Mwemba says if nothing is done about it, this will set a precedence of harassing opposition members on political grounds. A concerned citizen says restoring professionalism to the police service not only hinges on ensuring that the rule of law is upheld going forward, but by also ensuring that past crimes are prosecuted. Mr. Chaldron Mwemba, who is a concerned citizen, was speaking when he visited Lusaka Central Police on Wednesday. He has officially reported former Minister of Home Affairs, Mr. Stephen Kampiongo, who was presiding over the police during the time that President Hakainde Hichilema was allegedly harassed and his house broken into when he was being arrested for treason allegations while in the opposition in 2017. The concerned citizen says there is need to set an example in order to stop harassment of opposition political opponents. So as a bona fide citizen of Zambia, I have seen that it is very important for we to set the record straight because ministers in office today should learn from what happened in the previous government. A minister standing up giving orders, inspector general of police giving orders which are wrong, operating outside the constitution of Zambia where you have innocent citizens arrested. Mr. Mwemba has also reported other political officials for alleged harassment of citizens during the 2021 election campaign period. The second case is involving Edith Nawaki, where she was, uh, uh, you know, uh, handling the Hatembo case, using them against the same Haga in the Hijrem. This citizen suffered so much. We understand that Haga in the Hijrem himself has forgiven these people. But we also need to know that Haga in the Hijirema was the president of the United Party for National Development, which was an opposition political party. And now he's the president of Zambia. Moving on just like that will not set a very good example to the politicians of today. Tomorrow I may be an opposition leader myself. I may be minister of home affairs myself. And if things are not corrected today, it simply means that even you journalists are not going to be safe. By broadcast time, the reports had been documented by the police at the Lusaka Central Police in two formal statements for presentation to the relevant authorities within the service. Zipora Mshala, Kamnet News, Lusaka. The Patriotic Front has accused the Deputy Speaker of the National Assembly, attracted Sangano, of being biased towards the opposition in the National Assembly. PF Acting Secretary General Nixon Chilangwa says the biased approach towards the opposition is what prompted the PF parliamentarians to walk out of the House Tuesday afternoon. And the party has suspended the PF Lusaka Province Committee led by Kennedy Kamba and that all issues will be handled by the Secretariat. Mr. Speaker, I want to put it on record that we are proceeding with a protest to ensure that we are not part of this illegality. 30th November 2021, members of the opposition Patriotic Front walked out of Parliament after the Deputy National Speaker of the National Assembly, Attractor Tisangano, denied PF Kawamba constituency member of Parliament Nixon Chilangwa to raise a point of order. And PF Kawamba constituency member of parliament Nixon Chilangwa, who is also acting secretary general of the party, has accused the deputy speaker of being biased towards the opposition PF and says parliament is meant for debating important matters and not sidelining the opposition from raising point of orders. Colleagues on the right, they stood on four or five points of orders yesterday and they were granted those, point, those points of orders. I wanted to stand on a point of order yesterday. 
and I was denied that point of order. When I protested, I was chased out of that house by the second deputy speaker. That's unacceptable. You give the ruling party five points of orders, the opposition will deny us one single point of order. So my colleagues and I, my colleagues just elected to support me and we walked out of the house. And Mr. Chilangwa has accused advisors of President Hagainde Hichilema of being incompetent and says they are not fit to be called presidential aides and advisors. In a country in that fashion, you can't. If you have the brains, you have the experience. Colleagues, if you've been in the business for 10 years as an engineer, you mean you cannot get a contract, register a company through NCC, and go ahead and get a loan, go ahead and get a bond from insurance and get a, a contract, then it becomes a crime to President Haka in the Ichilema? No ways. I call a man. Hmm. I call a man. And the party has suspended PF Lusaka Province Committee led by Kennedy Kamba for growth in discipline. All issues pertaining to Lusaka Province will be handled by the Secretariat. The Kennedy Kamba Committee, which has been in the forefront of insulting the President, of insulting the members of the Central Committee, which has been eptom of indiscipline, is today dissolved. They have no single leg to stand on. They lost elections in Lusaka. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today they want to determine the, 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 the destination of this party, the future of this party. No. Mr. Chilangwa has since clarified that the party will hold its convention to elect a new president before June 2022 once all logistics are put in place and note that the convention will be held in June of 2022. It has since appealed to all party members to make contributions towards the convention. Prudence Jota, reporting for Kamne TV News. The Anti-Corruption Commission, SEC, has arrested and charged former Ministry of Health Permanent Secretary Dr. Kennedy Malama for two counts of unlawful failure to comply with applicable laws and procedures contrary to the laws of Zambia. In an interview with Kamnet News, SEC spokesperson Quinn Chiwe says Dr. Malama on dates unknown but between 1st August 2017 and 31st December 2018 did willfully fail to comply with applicable procedures by terminating a contract between the Ministry of Health and Savenda Management Service Limited for the supply and delivery of 50 basic life support ambulances, major spare parts for the ambulances and training of personnel. The Corruption Commission has arrested and charged former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dr. Kennedy Malama, for willful failure to comply with the law and applicable procedures contrary to Section 34 uh, of the Anti-Corruption Act Number 3 of 2012. And so the counts that have been leveled against him are two. And in the first count, we see that Dr. Malama, who is age 53, of Ibex Hill, Lusaka, uh, between August 1st, 2017 and, and December uh, 31st, 2018, uh, in Lusaka when he was employed in the Ministry of Health as permanent secretary in charge of administration jointly and whilst acting together with others unknown uh, did willfully fail to comply with applicable procedure by terminating a contract between the Ministry of Health and Savenda Management Services Limited for the supply and delivery of 50 uh, basic life support ambulances and the supply and delivery of major spare parts for the same ambulances as well as the training of personnel. In the second count, Dr. Malama, and also between the same period in Lusaka when he was Director of Health Promotion, Environment and Social Determinants at the Ministry of Health, did willfully fail to comply with applicable law as well as um, uh, procedures uh, when he jointly and whilst acting with other persons who were unknown um, did approve um, the Ministerial Procurement Committee paper number 131 of 2017. In this particular paper, paper it recommends the use of limited bidding international as the appropriate method of procurement of 50 ambulances without providing justification. We've come to the end of the news, but before we go, here are the headlines once again. 
SEC NUB's former Ministry of Health, P.S. Kennedy Malama, as Zambians reflect on the HIV burden. Former Home Affairs Minister Stephen Campiongo reported to the police for unprofessional conduct. Thank you for watching. I am Precious Mzea Sakaleji. Good afternoon.